Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandbold, and as always, joined by Jay Gilbert. How you doing, Jay? I am caffeinated, sir. Good to see you. Ready to go? Ready to go. So before we get to uh, this week's guest, which is an a interesting discussion about a new, I don't know how you describe it, a new record label structure a record yeah. label format, basically. Yeah. Um, we just want to do a quick thank you to our sponsors and our supporters. Thank you to Hypebot.com and Bands in Town for all you do to support us. And of course, to our sponsors, Bandzoogle.com. Built by musicians for musicians, Bandzoogle is an all-in-one platform that makes it easy to build a beautiful website and EPK for your music. Bandzoogle powers the websites for tens of thousands of musicians around the world, from weekend warriors to Grammy winners. All the features you need for a professional website are already built in, including hosting and a custom domain name, dozens of fully customizable design templates, tools to sell your music and merch commission-free, commission-free crowdfunding and fan subscription features, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters, of course, social media integrations, and amazing live tech support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. So we put together a great little offer for all of our listeners. Head over to bandzoogle.com, sign up, try it for free for 30 days. But when you register, use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY, all one word, and you will get 15% off the first year of any subscription. And of course, discmakers.com. We know it's a digital world, but there's still an important role for physical media for today's independent musician. Digital royalty payments can be so small that selling products like CD, vinyl, and t-shirts at gigs and online has become such an important income generator. For every CD you sell online or at a gig, you might need roughly 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money. That's a lot of streams and that's a lot of marketing. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your discs and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even t-shirts. So head over to discmakers.com. We've got a little offer for you. Place an order for 100 or more CDs. And when you check out, use the promo code FREEBIZ, all one word, FREEBIZ, and you will save up to $150 in shipping costs. So nice. who got joining us this week, Jay? Today we have the CEO and founder of a company called Artist Republic. They help indie artists manage, market, and book marketing for themselves. It's kind of like a, a record label platform. And uh, we have their CEO and founder, Nick Chanfioni. Yeah. Interesting conversation. A, as he described it, a all online record label. Um, it's an interesting sort of a la carte, but everything's under one umbrella type of service here. And, and mm -hmm. Artist Republic's been making some noise over the last year or so here. I mean, they've been on our radar and we've been getting emails and stuff like that from them. So give it a listen. We'll see you at the end. And we'd love to hear if you've got any experience using Artist Republic. Build a stunning band website in minutes with Bandzoogle. Go to bandzoogle.com to start your free 30-day trial and use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. So today we're joined by Nick Chanfioni, CEO, founder of Artist Republic. Nick, so good to see you, man. How's it going? Good to see you too. Glad to be on and, you know, just another day. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for joining us. Tell us about Artist Republic. I've gotten a chance to kind of go in and kick the tires and... Uh, it's really an interesting platform and one that's fairly robust. But tell, tell those who have never heard of Artist Republic, what, what's Artist Republic all about? So really what Artist Republic is all about, what our goal is, is creating the first ever truly record label online. And so the way that really works is we're trying to create a world where the 100 million plus independent artists across the world can access every resource they need on one website from production to distribution to marketing to live show booking to fundraising etc everything in one place 
Um, so now for really the first time ever, if you want to stay independent, you can have record label level systems on one centralized platform. You don't have to read through 200 pages of Google to figure out which websites to trust, which ones to use, who to use to distribute, who to use to market, which marketing resources to use. Now you have a trusted vetted website. Everything's in one place. Um, you know, really trying to be to some extent, when I say kind of the Amazon of the music industry, um, where like, I know for me, if a product's not on Amazon, I'm not probably going to buy it. Um, because clearly it's not trusted. It's not on Amazon. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of the same thing with us is building that centralized system so that artists don't have, you know, kind of the mistrust that is so rampant in, you know, the music tech space and they have a reliable platform to get everything they need. So, so Nick, as, as a record label online, mm -hmm. do, do you act as sort of a gatekeeper on the artists that you, you sign up to use your platform or is anybody free to sign up without any sort of, you know, Hey, is this music? Yeah. yeah you know, the, the old, the old school record label of, Oh, it's got a, you got a showcase and you got to, you know, talk to the A&R guy and it's got to get approval. I mean, are you wide open to anybody who wants to use it? So we are wide open. Um, and, but with that, obviously, you know, we've had a lot of backlash from people being like, you know, you got to jack up your prices. You have to create some sort of gates to, you know, keep the quality and stuff like that. And I've, we've, we've been fighting that consistently because I truly think that, you know, building a gate in the music industry for some things is not, you know, beneficial. If someone distributes a song to Spotify and it's not good and they don't get any streams, they're going to sit there. They're going to say, okay, well, why didn't it get any streams? And they're going to have to figure out well, what can I do better next time? Instead of saying, oh, I got this great music. It just needs to get out there. And then it's like, okay, you got it out there and it didn't do anything. So why? And I genuinely think by opening up the gates to some extent, you know, the same way anything else is in life. I mean, you know, for most part, we all go to school, most of us, and we all do a lot of those things. There's not a lot of gatekeepers in those areas. Um, and, you know, yeah, some people don't make it. Some people do. Some people realize they don't have to go that route. But at the end of the day, everyone, you know, to some extent has an option to go through those routes. And I want to create that same thing in the music industry where, you know, if you have the work ethic, you have the talent, and you want to really do what you want to do in the music industry, here's the ability to do that. There's no gates. We will build systems to recommend stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So like, you know, being if, if you're just starting out, we probably wouldn't recommend this system uh, because that is a higher tier system that we see success on that system from artists who are at this level or this level. Um, but we don't want to block that out from people. Um, because, you know, we wholeheartedly believe that there is thousands and millions of highly talented artists that solely can't get through just because they don't know the right person or they haven't paid the right guy or, you know, stuff like that. And we really want to break down that barrier and say, look, you can join. All the resources are here. How you use them is up to you. And, you know, what you get out of them is what you're going to be putting into it. But Got it. Here's everything in one place. Now, so when you've got all the resources, sorry, Mike, you've got all the resources and it, is it more of a DIY platform or can people get some one-on-one -on -one assistance is what's your knowledge base and your support there? So right now it's DIY um, with heavy hands-on support teams. Um, so we have in-house support teams that have worked in the music industry, have worked at actually a couple of them worked at major labels. Um, and really, you know, have a passion for helping artists. And we want to be as hands-on as possible while also being efficient. Um, and so it is kind of that balance. But, you know, we have an extensive knowledge base of systems. And we want to really help artists guide them through their careers. Um, like when you join the platform, like, what do you do? How do you start? Okay, you know, once these are the systems, these are what work best for this, you know, we actually started adding, you know, objectives to our systems. So like the objective is this, is to get out of this. So if you do this, the hope is that you're going to get to here or you're going to get this, or you're going to get that. Um, because yeah, that's, that's definitely a high piece. We definitely do want to add in the ability to have more high touch and one-on-ones. Um, but, you know, 
we're trying to do it right now. We've been being a startup. We've only been able to kind of do an air game though. So, you know, through the, the customer service reps and through um, tutorial systems and our podcasts and all that stuff of really, you know, trying to do a high level mass customization. Um, but, you know, we definitely want to you know, grow on that as it grows. Are you guys like a traditional label um, in the sense that you will invest money in an artist that there's uh, recoupments that you you would take from an artist that um, you know all, all of those you know mm-hmm. when when an, when an artist signs up and releases an album through you is it your album until it's recouped you know how are you different from yeah. a, when you know because again when people hear record label they're kind of sitting there going, Oh my God, you know, I'm signing away my soul and they're going to own me for the rest of my life. Yeah. So with us, what our kind of model is, is at no point in time, do we take any money from an artist? When you're with us, you have hundred percent control over your content, your rights, everything. (laughs) Um, The way we're actually, you know, generating revenue and stuff like that is for distribution, for example, it's $10 a year and you can distribute as much music as you want. So that's, you know, one revenue source just so to say for us. Um, and we're not taking any, any of your distribution royalties. We don't want to take that because it's already dismal. Um, why take a piece of a, an already small pie? Um, but we do have systems to actually, that we will be probably deploying in the next six or so months of actually, yeah, helping those artists get money. Um, whether that's, us actually putting some money behind artists, whether that's them actually, you know, enabling them to crowdfund their career through friends and family and stuff of that sort. Um, that really has a lot of these systems have been tried to be done before. Um, but I think what makes us different with us doing it is that that centralization, um, where you know there can be there's a lot more power to fundraising on an artist or public crowdfunding system than other platforms for your music career, because as a individual who may be investing in your nephew or your, you know, cousin or et cetera, who wants to start their music career, you don't actually know where that money's going to go. But with artists Republic, public, you know, you have some safety and security behind where that money's going to go. It's going through a trusted platform. You, you can actually watch what that person's doing. Um, and more importantly, if they're, investing in you know that person yeah. uh you know there's no other platform in the world that is going to actually have every single dollar a music artist makes yeah. and that's the big difference with artists public by centralizing it in one place we can really help the entire ecosystem succeed um instead of just focusing on one commodity yeah well you just hit it you know that ecosystem and and i was looking over the platform and i love how it's kind of laid out you know, you mm-hmm. got production, distribution, marketing. It's this linear approach. But the exciting part to me is when you get to marketing and you talk about things like blog promotion and Instagram and playlisting and things like that. Um, do you get involved in other areas like maybe publicity, sync, touring, merch, any of those? Yes. Yeah, so touring and merchandising is all under our live show system. Um, okay. That will be debuting probably within the next year or so um can't say much about it but it's it's a game changer um it is something that i can safely say the the music industry has never seen before um to the extent of of where we want to do it at um and that comes from my background i worked in live show promotion for five six years um so you know i know that world inside now i know how venues work i know how ticketing show booking everything works inside and out um, and so I'm really bringing that aspect to our live show system um, and making it replicative of how a booking agency would actually work or a music venue actually work. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, that's a big piece of it. But I, under our system, we consider that live show. We don't consider that under marketing. Um, under marketing, there's dozens of resources. We started out with the odd ones. We started out with what I, you know, kind of say the, se- the sexy ones right now. Um, you know, our influencer system is coming out in the next couple of weeks, helping artists connect with influencers on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube and mm-hmm. all that stuff to actually get their music out there. 
Um, and then the same thing, you know, helping them connect with blogs to have articles written about them. And we can actually help them, you know, with sample blog articles. Like this is what a sample of a new album release, you know, press it looked like. And so you can plug and play and build your own. And then here's all the outlets that you can send it to. Um, and so on and so on and building those, you know, marketing systems. And then we definitely will get into more of the traditional marketing systems. Um, but I think right now, you know, there's dozens of apps that can help you post on Instagram and there's sure. dozens of apps that can help you do a lot of that stuff, but there's not a lot of systems out there that, you know, provide validity and transparency to connecting with influencers or connecting with playlist curators or connecting with blogs or, you know, advertising systems, et cetera. Um, there's not a lot of transparency because you so, can go on Google and, you know, 25, yeah. you can buy 2,500 Spotify followers for 10 yeah. Yeah. In 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 the marketing sphere of what you're offering, are you just redirecting your artists to a third party contractor, basically, that says, hey, we vetted these guys, you can, you can hire them now or are you building all of these marketing systems in house that they're they're that that the artists have to use you? And then on top of that, is there a fee? Do they then have to pay to use that marketing tool, that marketing service you've created? Yeah, so it's all it's all marketplace based. Um, so you know, a great example would be the influencer one coming out the next couple of weeks. Um, artists go on there. There's hundreds and hundreds of pages of influencers across TikTok and Triller and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. And they can go through there and they can say, you know what, I want to submit my music to get in this famous vlogger's next YouTube video. Um, and they pay a submission fee, a couple bucks. Um, they send it to that, that vlogger. Um, and, you know, if it's placed, it goes. Um, but if it's not placed, that person gets feedback on why they're not placed in that blog or on that YouTube video. Um, and so we like to keep prices extremely low because we want to keep it accessible. You know, we don't want to charge people thousands of dollars to get on a TikTok influencer. We want to help people get in front of them um, or secure those deals. Like we have um, across of our playlisting system, it's that same thing, submission-based system. And it's anywhere from a dollar to $10. We cap it at around $10. And so on that, you're seeing submissions anywhere from a dollar to $10. And on average, we have about 44% of users that submit a song to a playlist actually get placed on that playlist. And if they don't get placed, the remaining you know 56%, they're getting valuable feedback on why their music wasn't placed and what they can improve to make their song better for the next time. And that I think is a complete win-win because it comes back to what we talked about in the beginning of content. You're not going to gate the content that you need to help to figure out a way for those artists to help improve their content. Um, gotcha. And that's what we want to do throughout all our systems is let the ones shine through, but also help the ones that are just getting started figure out how to improve that content. So is it all modular in that you don't pay a monthly subscription to Artist Republic, yeah. but certain areas that you may need help in you can pay for those and it's more targeted is that accurate exactly. it's all a la carte you can join the platform for free and everything that you want to add in you add in do you guys especially when it comes to influencers and playlisting because i know i've i've run into this myself do you vet out those people yeah. that are being submitted to know that you know, first of all, okay, you're paying a submission fee for them to review this, but we don't want a playlister who then says, I love this. And then yeah. says, by the way, send me another 50 bucks to get it added to the playlist or an influencer who does the same thing yeah. or, you know, playlists that you discover are filled with crap. You know, there's no control, quality control of the songs there. Yeah. You know, there's not real, it's bots that are doing the streaming. I mean, are you trying to, to vet out all of that? Especially with playlisting, because we're also a distribution company, we have that massive amount of distribution data. So we can extremely vet a lot of these playlists. Um, and we're extremely strict on it. I mean, there's a reason there is more fraud on Etsy than there is on Amazon. 
Amazon is way stricter with third-party vendors than Etsy is. Um, that's the same thing with us. We are extremely, extremely strict on our vendors. There is really, truly, for most minor things, there's only a two-strike policy. Um, but for anything big, it's a one-strike policy. If you at all respond to someone in feedback and send a personal contact, you're off the network. You're done. Um, that is, you know, we are extremely strict on all that stuff to keep that quality up because we want people to know that if you come here, your order is going to be processed. You know, we back every refund. We've never fought a refund on things. Like that's the reality of things. If there's a problem, we will fix it. Um, because we know that the music industry as a broad is seen as sketchy and scammy. Yeah. Um, and that's something that just by being a music company, people will already think you're a scam. And yeah, so no. you already have that going against you. And so you have to go the extra mile to get ahead of that. Where a lot of other places, you know, you're dealing with a, a deli and a new deli opens up. You're like, oh, cool. It's a new deli. Even if it's a, you know, maybe a six out of 10. At the end of the day, you know, you're not, you, you know, you're not like upset at them. You're not going to go leave them a bad Yelp review. Um, but in the music world, if your service is nine out of 10, people are going to think you're scamming because you're not a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Um, and that's something that you have to consistently counteract and we have to deliver such a level um, of excellence to really keep people. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about your biz resources. I thought that was pretty, uh, pretty helpful um, for a lot of artists, especially indie artists. Talk a little bit about what your biz resources section is all about. Yeah, so right now, biz resources are going to be changing. So right now, biz resources is really the areas for vendors. And so the reason we actually put it under the normal platform is because we know that artists are multidimensional. And so we wanted artists to be able to access the same biz resources that vendors access. And so if you are an artist, but you and you're distributing your music through us and you're using our marketing resources and all that fun stuff, but you're like, hey, I have... 150 beats that I'm sitting on that I don't have anything to do with. You can access the producer biz resources and sell those beats. And now you're able to make money through the same network that you're using. Same thing with, I have a bunch of, you know, buddies who are music artists that own playlists themselves. So they're using us for distribution and marketing, all that stuff. And then they're listing their own playlists. And so being able to help artists have that same access so that they can utilize the industry, but also generate new revenue streams off of it. Um, but that's all going to be, you know, definitely change We're actually be adding in more systems. We're actually adding in a knowledge system to help artists exactly that grow their business side of things. How do you do Facebook ads? How do you run, um, you know, how do you legalize yourself as an artist um, gotcha. and all that stuff? Um, we do want to dive into that because that's a whole nother world of artistry that is very, you know, not quantitative. And I don't think people pay attention to it enough. Can do, do artists have to be distributed through you in order to use all the other resources or can they come to you and say, Hey, I've got my music on mm -hmm. some other dis distribution platform, but I love your marketing portal. And I'd like to use that. Oh yeah, about, I would say probably about 40% of users don't have distribution somewhere else. Um, and we designed it like that exactly because I know we're not, you know, an early distribution company. There's so many distribution companies. Um, and if we were to limit that, we would lose, you know, a lot of our user base. Um, and so we wanted to leave it a la carte. You don't have to distribute to us. If you prefer staying with DistroKid, that's fine with me. Um, but I know you're here for some reason. Right. Right. What do you think your strength is? What do you think your superpower is? Our superpower hasn't been shown yet. Um, I say that very confidently. Um, I think Artist Republic is, I compare Artist Republic to a house a lot. Um, and when comparing it to a house, genuinely, we've just built the crawl space. You know, we are, we are nowhere near done the systems that we have deployed are nowhere near, you know, the really cool game changing ones we're about to deploy. Um, and those people are going to start seeing within the next year. How long have you uh, been around? Only 14 months. Oh, okay. Oh, so wow. you're, 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 you know, just building this plane in the air. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Yeah, I jumped off that cliff and I'm building it on the way down. No, so far, I, look, I've as an entrepreneur, together. I, I appreciate it. You know, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, and yeah. I, I like the fact that it, even in this short period of time, it's, it's very easy to navigate. It's got a good UI and let's face it, taking something complex and making it simple is challenging. And when it's done right, it looks really easy, um, but it's really interesting what you've put together. Tell me a little bit about your background. You touched on it a little yeah. bit, but, you know, I, I get the live thing, you know, and there's so many great experiences and knowledge you can gain from booking shows, putting on shows, touring, seeing how that side of the business works. But talk a little bit about what brought you to this. So kind of connecting both things together. So first off, inside and out, I'm a bootstrapper at heart. I've always bootstrapped companies. This is, I think, the fourth company I've been, you know, really involved in, third or fourth company I've really been involved in. And so a great example of that is actually on the UI. Um, up until two months ago, we actually didn't even have a UI UX designer um, to actually build, to actually design and lay out the website. Um, I actually built the entire what you're looking at right now on the line, I've built the entire wireframes, mockups, and designs on Canva um, and gave them to developers and said, build this. Um, now, if you ask any designer, if you they were to design a website on Canva, they'd laugh at you. Um, that just doesn't get done, but it was free. Right. It was bootstrapped. We did it. Um, and, you know, that's tried and true. Um, you know, now we actually have a designer. The new UIs are absolutely beautiful. Um, and I will definitely say to people, you know, when that time is right, get a designer because there's things that you will miss. Um, but yeah, so going off of that, my background, so I've been involved in the music industry for coming up on nine years or so. Um, I started out very oddly, um, you know, I'm very open about the story. When I was in eighth grade, I lost my dad to cancer. And so at that point I got deeply involved in Relay for Life started actually a charity event with one of my buddies in high school to raise money for it. The first one completely failed. I uh, had it the same night as my high school had prom. Ten of my friends showed up and, uh, you know, I went back to school extremely embarrassed. And I was like, well, I got to show someone what, what the, you know, what I can do. Came back the next year, ended up, you know, hosting it again, sold it out with, you know, new processes and techniques. And at that point, I just fell in love with the music industry. Um, you know, being 16 years old and getting paid to throw parties for a living, I was in love. Um, and so that's what I did. I opened up an LLC. I started hosting concerts all across Connecticut, where I was from. And, you know, by the time I graduated high school, I had about 80 concerts under my belt. Went out to school at Bryant University, started a music marketing company there, actually, um, specifically in the world of Instagram growth um, for the same reason I started Artist Public. I had an insane process for growing Instagram accounts um, when I was doing the concerts because I would launch an Instagram account for each concert. I'd use an insane, you know, targeted data analytics way to actually grow the account, sell tickets through it, then sell up the concert, close the account, move on to the next one. And when I saw a bunch of my music artist buddies getting screwed over by people online selling fake followers, I was like, yeah, someone's got to do something about it. And so I launched the agency. And when I was doing that was when I came up with the idea for Artists Public because we had about 500 music artists using it. And I realized that they needed more, but yeah. the, you know, $120 a month was really the maximum they could spend. So sure. I couldn't manage five people effectively for only 120 bucks a month. So yeah. how would I build a mass scale fix to this age old problem? And yeah. truly the only way was to build a centralized software. You know, when I was doing a little bit of research on, on uh, Artist Republic, I, I came across an, an article um, and there were about you, and there was uh, a few points that really resonated with me because I say the same thing so frequently, and, and I think Mike does too. And I'm just going to read these three things and get your comments on it from the article. They 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 were saying these three things that you had mentioned. One, you know, build value, money will come. Number two, mm. no days off. And number three, which I love, is hard work always beats talent. <laughs> Talk about that for a second. So, um, yes. So my first one, um, 
that's one of my favorite parts um, in the sense of building value. Um, yeah. I never thought of it as a quote until uh, my lead investor, David Byrne, who was one of the original founders of Benchmark Capital, um, he sent me a book. He sent me the book Excellence Wins by Horst Schultz. Fell in love with that book. And it's, it's very true. Excellence always wins. Um, and But my favorite quote that I always say to people is exactly that, which I always say, if you chase a cat, you will never catch the cat. But if you have cat food, the cat comes to you. That's mm -hmm. the reality. Yeah. If you're out there going for investors, if you're chasing money, if you're chasing the investors, they won't come. But if you have the stats that they need, they come to you. If you're out there for clients and you're just chasing the clients, they're never going to come. But if you have that intrinsic value, they just come to you. Um, and I think people miss that. And I've missed that. I made that mistake when I was doing concerts um, when I was younger. I you know, was chasing, you know, how do I get more money out of the concerts? Mm -hmm. How do I get more money? And then the concerts started tanking because I wasn't delivering the same value that was getting people to come back. Um, when really, yeah. if you just take that bet and you just deliver value, people are going to intrinsically come. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah let me just I interject think, really quickly. My, Mike yeah. and I talk sometimes about companies that will build a platform that aren't really solving a real world problem, right? No. They're, they're a solution in search of a problem. And I think that speaks to yeah. that cat analogy, which really hit home with me because I tell people that all the time. You're absolutely right. You, and it's, it repeats itself over and over again. If there's something that shows value, uh, you build it and people will come. Yeah. And also with that, I always tell people, you, your market defines you. You do not define your market. Um, I think people miss that. Artist Public was actually built by conducting about 300 to 400 interviews <laughs> with independent artists. And that's how we built the platform. We conducted yeah. those interviews. We figured out exactly what their problems were. And then we built a software around it. Um, and I think that's, you know, true inside and out. And that's also goes into exactly that hard work beats talent. Um, you know, I've always, always been the underdog, uh, you know, inside and out, <laughs> everything I've done, always been the underdog um, from, you know, when I was hosting concerts, I was hosting concerts at 16 years old and I was hosting 18 plus 21 plus concerts that I couldn't technically even go to. Um, <laughs> and, you know, people were telling me, I will never forget my first concert I hosted, I was 14 years old. They were like, who the hell is this kid? If I was 21 now and I met a 14 year old trying to host a concert, I would laugh in his face. Yeah. Um, and then I figured out a way to just prove it by just working my butt off. Um, and it was the, you know, same thing with, my music marketing company, I took classes Tuesdays and Thursdays. I would then schedule 12 hour day sales calls on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. I would take 12 minutes to sell a client, three minutes to grab a drink, and then I'd be back on a call. Um, and I would just hammer out clients all day. I had nobody else working with me. Um, and I built that company from that. Um, yeah. And it's kind of the same thing with Artist Public. And, you know, I, it's always, always been that. I always think, you know, I didn't go to an Ivy League. I didn't go to a top school. I ended up actually dropping out by my investors. They were like, you're out. Sorry. You know, we, you're, we're not paying you to go to school. We're paying you to run a company. Um, you know, never grew up Silver Spoon. Obviously, you know, learned how to be an adult real quick at 13 years old. And I think that was the reality. I was always an underdog. And I was like, the only way to succeed for it was just hard work. Like, I learned yeah. that is... When I was in eighth grade, I saw a kid get arrested in my uh, in one of the towns over from me for tax evasion. It scared the crap out of me. Um, I ended up reading the IRS website over four days and learning how to pay taxes. Um, you just, you just got to learn. Like you just have to. Yeah. Do I think that's a really good message. And uh, yeah. you know, Mike and I believe that you know the harder I work, the luckier I get you know, kind of thing that you, you, you can wait around to have things happen to you, or you can go out and make things happen. So, um, Nick, it, uh, tell us where people can learn more about you, where they can learn more about yeah. Artist Republic. Where can they, where can they dig in? So you can learn more about me. Obviously you find me on LinkedIn and Nick Championi. I'll be obviously somewhere in the title so you can spell my last name. Um, <laughs> you can find more about Artist Public, obviously on artistpublic.com. Um, and then it's at Artist Republic on every single social network. Um, it's all Artist Public with a K. And uh, yeah, that's that's where I am. And most app of the app is APP, 
It's it sounds a little bit like you said at, but it's A P P, right? No, it's at at Artist Republic. Oh, okay. Because I'm uh, looking at your URL and it's A P P. Oh yeah, so that's Artist when you Republic. log in. That's when you oh, log okay. in. If you go right. to Sorry for the confusion. Com, we'll bring you in at <laughs> Artist okay. Republic. If you want to find us on socials, gotcha. Artistrepublic.com. All right. Um, Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. That that should be it. All right, Nick, thanks so much for joining cool. us today. Thank you so much, Keep Nick. us posted on what you're yes. up to. And if you don't mind, as we uh, go in and kick the tires, we'll send you a little feedback and we'll be, uh, we'll be cheering right. from the sidelines. Love it. Love it. Any feedback is duly noted and I will right. definitely get it done. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Nick. you so much, Nick. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. All right. Thank you. Discmakers.com. Use code FREEBIZ for ground shipping on CD orders of 100 units or more, $150 value. I like the concept of, of Artist Republic here. You know, the, the all-in-one destination. One-stop shop. One-stop one shop. Um, you know, what I would love to throw out there is, you know, do any of our listeners, any of our viewers, have you guys... have? guys or girls um has anyone used artist republic do you have yeah, any what was your experience any, what was your experience what what features did you like what features would you like to see you know i i guess you know could you compare this to what you were doing prior meaning if you were doing using this service and that service and that service and that service is it much easier now that you're all under one umbrella yeah. And how do you like the the pay structure instead of subscribing to a submit hub, uh, playlist push, foundy, you know, uh, show.co, whatever. It sounds like this is it could be that you you go in and just find the areas that you need. Right. And it's not it's more a la carte. And I would love to, like you said, find out from our listeners are you using it? Are you having success? Uh, I'd love to get some feedback. Yeah, but I do. I do love the concept of all yeah. in one, easy to find what you need. That that they vetted out who they're the yeah. systems they've put in place and the people that they're referring you to. Um, you know, that's all strong and extremely valuable. Yeah, and I also like the fact that you don't have to have a separate distributor. Nothing wrong with CD Baby, TuneCore, DistroKid, nothing wrong with that at all, but they have that built in. And I've never seen a platform that offered some of these, you know, pitching to blogs and playlists and all of this, and they have their distribution. Um, so I'd, I'd exactly. like to see how that works as well. Yeah. So, so leave, us, leave us a comment if you've had any experience, good or bad, hopefully it's all good. Mm -hmm. um, but love to hear anybody's experience using Artist Republic. Um, so before we wrap up, just a quick shout out to uh, Hypebot and Bands in Town. Thank you for your continued support. And of course, to our sponsors, Bandzoogle.com and Discmakers.com. And obviously, if you have a service, a product that you'd like to put in front of our listeners and our followers, reach out to Jay or myself. We'd love to talk to you and bring you on board as a sponsor as well. Um, if you are watching us or listening on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, follow us, please, on Spotify, if that's where you uh, take your podcasts. iTunes, hit that subscribe button as well. We are we everywhere it. you can find podcasts out there. Um, that's it. We will.